So we're going to look at some simultaneous equations where we have a linear equation and a quadratic equation. And we're going to solve these to find x and y. OK, so if we look at the first one, y equals 2x plus 5 and y equals x squared plus 3x plus 5, what we need to do is we need to use a form of substitution where we can just put one equation equal to the other. Because if this is what y is equal to and that is what y is equal to, then they, both, they must both be the same. So the 2x plus 5 has to be the same as the x squared plus 3x plus 5. Now, what's convenient here is that I can subtract 5 from both sides, so they can both disappear. You can subtract the 2x from both sides as well, and you're just left with 0 equals x squared plus x. Now, to solve this equation, you have to factorise the right-hand side. It is a quadratic, after all. So we can factor out the x and have x plus 1 inside the bracket. So either the x equals 0 or the x is equal to minus 1 in order for that bracket to be 0. So there are two x values. Now, to find the respective y values, we need to substitute these into either of these two equations. The first equation is the easiest to work with. So when x is 0, we have y is equal to 2 lots of 0 uh, plus 5. So 2 lots of 0 plus 5. And so that's just 5. And when x equals minus 1, we can substitute it into the first equation as well. So y is equal to 2 lots of minus 1 plus 5. So minus 2 plus 5 gets me to 3. So the linear equation, the line, and the quadratic, the parabola, intersect at 0, 5 and minus 1, 3. OK, so here is an example where we could use factorization to solve the respective quadratic that I find. So that's how we can find the coordinates of where these first two intersect. So for number two, we have y is equal to 3x minus 7 and y is equal to x squared plus 8x minus 1. So we're going to use a similar method, putting one equal to the other. Now, if I throw everything onto the right-hand side of the equation, I am subtracting 3x from both sides and adding 7 to both sides. So I get 0 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now that, if you can spot that it can be factorised, then factorise it. This one can. So that can factorise to x plus 2, x plus 3. So either x equals minus 2, oh, sorry, or x equals minus 3, in order for those brackets to be 0. So if x is equal to minus 2, I can substitute that into the first equation. That's the easiest to work with. So y is equal to 3 lots of minus 2 take away 7. So minus 6 take away 7 is minus 13. Or when x equals minus 3, y is equal to 3 lots of minus 3, take away 7. So minus 9, take away 7, so minus 16. So the line intersects the parabola at minus 2, minus 13, and minus 3, minus 16. Okay? And they are the two coordinates that satisfy these two simultaneous equations. So if we have a look at the third one, we've got y is equal to 2x plus 5. So 2x plus 5 is going to be equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. So if I throw everything onto the right-hand side of the equation again, I can subtract 2x from both sides, so plus 2x, and then take away 5 from both sides, and that gets me down to minus 8. Now, here is the quadratic equation. Now, I notice that all of the coefficients here can uh, have a factor of 2. So I can divide through by 2 to simplify this. Now, you didn't have to do that, but if you can see it, then you might as well. Then you must think, can it factorise? 
Well, this one can't, I'm afraid. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use uh, either completing the square and solving or the quadratic formula. I'm going to go straight in with the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c square rooted all over 2a. So we get minus 1 plus or minus 1 minus 4 times 1 times minus 4. So that's 16. So 1 and 16 is 17. So the square root of 17 all over 2. Okay. So it might be easier um, to split that apart. Um, I'm not going to. Okay. So let's see. So we've got x equals minus 1 plus root 17 over 2 and x is equal to minus 1 minus root 17 over 2. Now we need to find the y coordinate so we're going to have to substitute these into one of these two equations. The first one is clearly going to be the easiest to work with. So if I, if I substitute this into 2x plus 5 y is equal to two lots of this so two lots of that will cancel out that 2 in the denominator there. So we have minus 1 plus root 17. And we've still got that plus 5 on the end. So we're going to have 4 plus root 17. And if I do the same with the x value here, times everything through by 2, it's going to cancel with that half. So minus 1 take away root 17. And we've still got the plus 5, so add that on. So it's 4 minus root 17. So our two coordinates are minus 1 plus root 17 all over 2, 4 plus root 17. And our second coordinate of intersection is minus 1 minus root 17 over 2, 4 minus root 17. So they are the exact coordinates of where this line crosses this curve. Okay. So, let's keep going. Let's have a look at number four. So, number four, we have x plus 2y equals 3, and y equals x squared minus 8. So, this time, I've got this x plus 2y equals 3. Uh, it's not written as y equals mx plus c now. Now, I could rearrange it to get that and put one equal to the other, or you can substitute the y equals x squared minus 8 into that one. Seems perfectly fine. Let's do it that way. So we're going to have x plus two lots of y, which is x squared minus 8, uh, equals 3. So I'm going to expand that bracket, like so. If I move everything to the left-hand side and rearrange it to get the 2x squared at the front, I've still got the plus x, and then I'm going to take 3 from both sides, so I'll get this minus 19 equals 0. Now, this quadratic, it may factorise, it may not, OK? Um, you've got choices of trying to factorise it, um, or you can use the quadratic formula, or you can use uh, completing the square and solving. Seeing as I've done a bit of factorising, I've done uh, the quadratic formula, let's do some completing the square, okay, for a bit of revision. So we're going to factor the two out of the first two terms. So two lots of x squared plus a half x. Still got the minus 19 on the outside. I complete the square on the inside, so I'm going to have x plus a quarter squared Take away a quarter squared, so take away a sixteenth. Take away 19 equals zero. So two lots of x plus a quarter squared. Two lots of minus a sixteenth is minus an eighth. Uh, it's going to be easier if I turn 19, minus 19 into eighths. So what is 19 times 8? Well, 8 nines are 72. 1 8 is 8 plus the 7 is 52, so 1 5 2. So this is minus 1, 5, 2 over 8 equals 0. So we've got uh, two lots of x plus a quarter squared. Minus an eighth, minus 152 over 8, so minus 153 over 8. Put that onto the other side, so 153 over 8. 
I can now divide through by 2. So we're going to get x plus a quarter squared uh, is equal to 153 over 16. Now I'm going to square root both sides. Um, just trying to see if uh, that 153 can be simplified when I square root it. Just keeping that in my head. So plus or minus the square root of 153 over 16. We have access to a calculator, so can always check. So 3 root 17, 9 goes into 153. So this is equal to plus or minus 3 root 17 in the numerator. And of course, 16 square rooted is 4. So we've got x equals, take the quarter from both sides, so minus a quarter plus or minus 3 root 17 over 4. OK, so they are the x values. So I now need to find the y values. So I'm going to have to substitute these into one of the two original equations. OK, so let's erase what I don't need, which is that. So we have one x value that is minus a quarter plus 3 root 17 over 4. And our other x value is x is equal to minus a quarter minus 3 root 17 over 4. So I'm going to substitute this. So if I, I could erase that one now. I'm going to substitute these into the x plus 2y equals 3. Now, it might be easier if I rearrange this now. So what have we got? We're going to have 2y is equal to 3 minus x. So y is equal to 3 halves take away a half of x. So I can substitute them into that. So y is equal to 3 halves take away a half of this. So take away a half of minus a quarter plus 3 root 17 over 4. So that's 3 halves take away, well, plus rather, a half times a quarter, so an eighth. Um, then a half times 3 quarters, so 3 eighths of minus 3 root 17 over 8. Let's simplify that. So 3 halves is 12 eighths, so that's 13 eighths. Take away 3 root 17 over 8. So that's the y coordinate there. As for this one, it's going to be a very similar calculation. So y is equal to 3 halves. Uh, take away 1 half of the minus a quarter. Take away 3 root 17 over 4. So 3 halves plus an eighth uh, plus 3 root 17 over 8. 3 halves plus an eighth was 13 eighths. OK, so we now have the two coordinates that we need. The x coordinate was that, so minus a quarter plus 3 root 17 over 4. The y coordinate was 13 eighths minus 3 root 17 over 4. Uh, sorry, over 8. And the second intersection point, minus a quarter, take away 3 root 17 over 4. And the y coordinate, 13 eighths plus 3 root 17 over 8. I keep on wanting to write 4. It's because of that one. OK? And that is the answer to the last one. Much more fiddly, that one, uh, because of the uh, fractions and the roots involved, but nothing the calculator can't handle just to check when simplifying the third.